it is two dot sided okay you can actually see from a syntax perspective we're allowed that particular option so this is going to be a two-sided single sample t-test and then i'm going to specify my my null position okay my null position is that the mean is equal to 19 dollars okay 19.00 so the question we're asking is this, is that, is there any evidence to suggest that the average total bills that were paid, okay, and they're stored within this TIPS data set, is there any evidence to suggest that the average total bills, yeah, okay, are different to $19, okay? Is there evidence to suggest that it's greater than $19, or is there evidence to suggest that the total bills, that the average total bills are less than $19? And that's all we have to do here, okay? And that's how simple it is to run a single sample t-test, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit return, and what we get here is we get the results of the t-test, okay? And you can see that our test statistic here is, 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 is equal to uh, 1.379. Okay, the degrees of freedom is equal to 243. Actually, for a single sample test, the degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So actually, there's 244 observations with respect to the total bills. So that's what that's really saying to me. And the p-value, the actual probability of observing this test statistic if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, in other words, if the null hypothesis, if the average bill is $19. Okay, this p-value represents the probability of observing this test statistic. Okay, which is the probability of observing it is a 0 0.1691. Okay, and actually we know that the rhyme goes like this: if the p is low, the null must go. What do we mean by that? We mean if the reported p-value is less than the significance level that we've set for our test, and we typically set significance levels at the 5% significance level, or an alpha is equal to 0 0.05. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, there's evidence to suggest, okay, there's evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis. Now, in this case, there's no evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis because our p-value is greater than 0 0.05, okay? So there's no evidence to reject the null. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't make the null hypothesis true, okay? It just suggests that there's no evidence to suggest that the alternative is true. Okay. And another thing that we're after getting out here out, uh, uh, output is it's actually have to specify what the alternative hypothesis is in this for this particular test. The alternative hypothesis is the true mean is not equal to 19. Now that's just specifying what the alternative is. It's not saying that the true mean is not equal to 19. It's not telling us the result of the test. The result of the test is based off our interpretation of the p-value. Okay. And then what we also get is we get a 95% confidence interval, okay, uh, for the true population mean, which is the lower bound on that is 18.66 and the upper bound is 20.90. And actually, you can actually see that the hypothesized mean value, the null position, is actually contained within this 95% confidence interval, okay? It's not outside it, okay? So that's another way we could interpret uh, whether we're going to reject the null hypothesis or not. We fail to reject if the, if the hypothesized mean is within our confidence level. Okay. If it's outside our confidence level, uh, well then we we would actually have evidence to reject. Okay. Uh, the other information that's after being provided here is the actual mean of the total bills data set. The actual mean is nineteen dollars and seventy eight cents, or nineteen dollars and seventy nine cents, rounded to two decimal places. Okay. So that's how we run our t test. That's a si that's a single sample two sided test. Okay. What about if I was to hypothesize, is there any evidence to suggest that the mean value is greater than $18, let's say, for argument's sake. So I'm just running a different test, different hypothesis. And once again, what we'll do is we'll call the function t.test, followed by an open and close round brace. The first parameter that we feed in is the data set that we want to analyze. So it's tips, and we're interested in the total, the total bill data set. We specify the alternative hypothesis next, so we have alternative, so we have alternative equals, okay, in this case I'm going to say greater than or greater, okay, to indicate that it's a, it's a single sided test, it's a single sample, okay, one tail test, okay, and then I'm going to specify the null position, which is mu is equal to 18, 18 dollars. So the question that we're asking here is, is there any evidence to suggest that the average total bills paid okay, to these waitresses yeah, is greater than 
eighteen dollars. Okay, is there any evidence to suggest that that's the case? Okay, so the 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 null position in this case is that the mean is less than or equal to eighteen dollars. Okay, but I mean let's hit return here and let's see what we get out. Okay, so we're going to hit return, and now you can see we get something totally different. Yeah, we get a test statistic. Okay, of three point one three three seven. Once again, the degrees of freedom is two hundred forty three. That shouldn't change because our sample size has been the same. Okay, but this time the p value is zero point zero 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 nine six nine two. Okay. And once again, our rule to, to try to figure out whether we reject or not, the rule is if the p is low, the null must go. And as I said earlier on when we did the first test, we always set our p value, or sorry, we always set the significance of our tests at the 5% significance level. Unless you want to be more confident and have more significance associated with your result, you would change that particular value. But in the social sciences, we usually set it at 5%. Okay. So if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, I'll reject the null. There's evidence to suggest that the null position is not true. And in this particular case here, you can see that the p-value, the probability of observing this particular test statistic, yeah, is very, very small if this null was actually true. Okay. In which case, the probability of observing it would be high if this, prob if this null position was not true, if that makes sense. Okay. And that's the way this sort of works. I know it's a bit of a conundrum when we say it in words like that, okay. but that's sort of the logic behind what's happening here. So actually, what this result here is telling me is that there is evidence to suggest, because okay, okay, I'm rejecting the null, in which case I'm going for the alternative. There's evidence to suggest that the true mean Okay, the true total bill average, yeah, the true mean is greater than eighteen dollars or eighteen euros. And once again, we have our confidence interval here. It's a ninety-five percent confidence interval, and it starts at eighteen point eight four four, and actually goes out to infinity. Okay, <coughs> goes out to positive infinity. Yeah, and you can see that the the actual the the null position of eighteen is not contained.